Hi everyone, my name is Michael Eilbrock with Diesel Laptops and today we're going to go over doing a battery recharge current test on a truck. And uh, you might be asking yourselves, well Michael, why would I be doing a battery recharge current test and what is a recharge current test? Well, in the field, uh, the normal run-of-the-mill test that you do on batteries is a load test with a carbon pile. And when you're doing that type of test, you're actually doing a discharge test on the battery to see if the voltage will hold. Well, there's also another test called a recharge current test where the battery is basically drawing so much current uh, into the system. And if it's drawing too much current into the system, it can affect the operation of the electrical system, such as you could have repeated alternator failures on a truck uh, and that would give you this issue. So to do, to do this test and how it, how it works is you're gonna go up to your truck, all right, and on this system here, um, on this truck, I drew it out. We have four batteries, 12 volts. They're wired in parallel. And in order to read the current going through each set of batteries here, because they're separated from two different packs here, you're going to take a current clamp and you're going to put your current clamp around the negative for one leg of those batteries for the set and then you're going to do the same thing for the other set right here okay then you're going to start the engine you're going to let the truck idle for about 10 minutes or so and then you're going to take your readings and you're going to make sure that the batteries are not consuming any more than about 10 amps total Per set so the maximum you could have for the system before you will start to potentially have issues is about 20 amps and if it climbs any higher than that what's going to happen here ladies and gents is when you start the truck and the vehicle is running and say you're going down the road normal operation what's going to happen is when you turn on more loads and more loads on to that system it develops more current into your electrical system and thus you create more heat. So what happens is the electrical system basically goes over its threshold for its limit for the system for how much current that it can take, how much heat the alternator can take, all right? So for example, say you have a, have a vehicle where the, the maximum alternator output is like 100 amps okay well if you have the batteries drawing more current then it can go over that threshold create more heat in the electrical system and it's going to damage your rectifying diodes in your alternator so uh, one example you know where you could have this issue and not know it is say you just replaced an alternator and the vehicle came back um, like an, like a week later and the alternator died again on you. Well, that's because the batteries are consuming too much current, and as soon as you start turning on additional loads, it's too much heat for the electrical system. So this is where this test is very valuable. And also, in the industry, and, and also what I have seen as well, uh, you can have batteries pass a industry standard carbon pile load test or pass on a handheld battery tester, but it fails on the current test when it's drawing too much current while the vehicle is running. So this is why this test is so valuable. It's a good test to do for maintenance, keeping up on your systems. And it's also a good check as well when you're having charging issues, multiple alternator failures, all right? So with that being said, I'm gonna go over here to my multimeter and I'm gonna show you how to set up your amperage clamp. On your amperage clamp, where you have two different settings, you have a 40 amp output for one millivolt for every 100 milliamps, or you have a 400 amp output for one millivolt every amp. So I like to keep things simple, so I'm just gonna set it on one millivolt per amp on the meter. So I'm gonna to go to 400 amps here on the clamp and then I've got my meter on DC volts. And what I like to do is I'm gonna put it at a thousandths of a volt resolution. I'm just gonna go manual six volt range and one millivolt is a thousandths of a volt. So if we count from the decimal here to the right, so 
that'd be ones, tens, hundreds, thousands right here. So that's a millivolt, all right? So then we're gonna take this amperage clamp. I'm gonna put it around one of the uh, negative cables first on those legs on the drawing that I showed you. And then we're gonna start up the truck. We're gonna let the truck run for about 10 minutes and then we'll uh, check our results and make sure they are below that spec that I told you about to watch for to make sure that the batteries are not drawing too much current. Okay, so I've got my amperage clamp here. I've got it set. All I have to do now is I'm just going to push the zero button on the clamp to zero out my meter. I'm going to take the clamp and I'm going to go around uh, one of the negative cables here for the one leg and then we'll switch to the other one and check it after it's run for 10 minutes. But we're going to start off with this leg right here. So I'm just going to open the jaws on the clamp, put it over the cable, and we're good to go. Now I'll just start the truck. Okay, so we've let the truck run for about 10 minutes now. And as you can see on my meter here, now that leg of those batteries is only drawing about 11 amps right now. So if you split that between the two, each one's only drawing like five to six amps total, which that's good, that's within the spec, okay? And like I said before, if you start seeing like over 10 amps of draw, you know, where it gets upwards of like, uh, like 20 amps and on up, after 10 minutes of engine operation, your batteries are failing, okay? And then you need to either uh, recharge, retest again, and then, uh, and then do the test again. And then also, the next thing you'd wanna do is also make sure that your charging system is working properly as well, making sure it's putting out the proper voltage at idle that the manufacturer tells you it's supposed to have, okay? So with that being said, let me shut the truck off here and then I'm gonna go to the board and I'm gonna explain to you how you can isolate this, okay? Okay, so now that we've done that test, uh, we checked the, the current, the draw of the batteries after 10 minutes. Now we're within spec, we had like 10, 11 amps. So if you think about that in ratio, it basically means pretty much more or less they're gonna be split. It'll be, you'll have one battery at five amps, one battery at six amps. However, if you really wanted to isolate and figure out which battery is drawing more current, all you have to do is you would take your current clamp, take it off the negative, and then you would put it on each individual leg to the battery, and then it would tell you how much each individual battery is drawing, okay? So if you wanna isolate that, you can do it like that, or you can do it that way as well, okay? So that's how you uh, tell if your batteries are not uh, performing up the stuff. If, if they're turning into more of a load, on your electrical system, that is a problem and it needs to be addressed. Just remember when you're doing the test that you start up the engine, you don't wanna have any loads on the truck. So no lights, blower, all that stuff has to be off, okay? Have all that off, have it at idle, and then run the truck for 10 minutes and then check your results, okay? I also recommend that uh, as much as you can, take known goods of your readings on all the different trucks and heavy equipment you have to get your baselines as well, okay? So, because this is more like a rule of thumb that I've seen in the industry and it works great, but sometimes you can have some discrepancies. So I always uh, recommend that you get known goods as well, okay? So now that I've explained the, uh, the hookups for a parallel system, I also did a drawing here for a 24 volt system. Okay, so on a 24 volt system, you've got two batteries. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative. You have the two 12 volt batteries add up and it gives you a 24 volt system. So in this scenario, if you wanted to measure the, the total current that the batteries are drawing while the engine is running, is you could either take your clamp and go around your negative or you can go around the positive, okay? It doesn't matter because this is a series circuit. So the current is going to be the same in any series circuit, all right? So you do the same test, and then for this setup, how I usually go, go about it is, I look for less than 20 amps after 10 minutes, 
and then uh, at engine idle, no loads on. And if it goes below that 20 amps after the 10 minutes, then I'm, I'm good, okay? But if it stays over that 20 amps, then that means you got an issue, okay? So, and the reason why I do it like that is due to the way that it's wired here, okay? So it's in series. So I basically take into account, you know, normal rule of thumb, like I said, on an individual battery is about 10 amps of draw. Well, since these are in series, I can't really isolate from here like this the way it's hooked up while it's running. So I just do a total measurement and I look for my total spec of 20 amps. And if it's over that 20 amps, then I know I have a problem.